Implementing function overloading and overwriting in Java allows us to write code that is more polymorphic. Overloading is horizontal. That is to say it takes place at the same level of inheritance within a class hierarchy. It involves functions with the same name but different types and numbers of parameters. Overriding, on the other hand, is vertical. That is to say it takes place at different levels within a class inheritance hierarchy and operates within the parent-child relationship. This means it involves functions with the same name and the same number and type of parameters, but at different levels of inheritance. We've been taking a look at inheritance and class hierarchies and polymorphism, or writing polymorphic code inside of Java. And one of the neat uh, structures um, involved with writing polymorphic code is the implementation of both overloading and overriding. And so um, today we're just going to contrast the difference between those two and look at examples in code of, of how you use them. First, let's take a look at Java function overloading. So first off, overloading. And you can think of overloading as being horizontal. And what we mean by that is it takes place at the same level in the inheritance hierarchy. So in other words, within the same class. Um, and it would be basically be functions with the same name, but different arguments or parameters. Uh, within the same class and at the same level of inheritance, okay? So an example of overloading would be if within the same class here, overloading versus overriding, that's our class name, our file name, we will create two functions, two methods, and they're both called speak, okay? But one method speak takes no arguments, and the other method speak takes a string literal. Now normally Java, C++, you know, most object-oriented languages won't let you create two functions or methods with the same name. But if you give them different parameters, different argument lists, it will. Because it assumes that you're you know, just overloading the function. And that's kind of the idea behind overloading. Um, you know, basically, we could write a dozen different functions uh, called speak. And you know, obviously, we could call it speak1, speak2, speak3, speak a, speak b, speak c, speak d. But that can be cluttered and, and make things difficult to remember. So the advantage of overloading is I can write a dozen different functions and methods and call them all speak. And it'll just work right based on the kind of arguments and objects I pass to it. I might pass an integer into some speak methods. I might pass a string literal into others. I might pass a, a class object into even still other methods of the speak function. But the cool thing about it is it simplifies things and makes things a little bit more elegant and streamlined because I only have to remember the speak method. And I can just magically pass in all these different arguments and parameters, and it works almost like magic or voodoo. You know, it's kind of, we're kind of practicing some data hiding here. We're hiding some of the complexity of an object. And again, the analogy is that, um, you know, I don't necessarily want to make my customer know how to build a car from scratch to be able to buy my car and just drive my car or use my car. So um, overloading is, it, it's a great tool, you know, in a, a horizontal fashion of writing polymorphic functions and functions that can do multiple things or more than one thing, handle more than one type of argument or parameter or a number of parameters. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the definition. Speak that takes no arguments is simply gonna say, what a lovely day. And in this case, the speak that accepts an argument is gonna take whatever we pass into it and it's going to concatenate it to the string. So it'll say speaking colon. And then what do we pass in? This has been a horrible day. So in other words, it'll just build a string and say speaking. This has been a horrible day. If we pass in a string, if we just call speak, it's a lovely day. All right, so that's overloading. Now let's examine Java function overriding. Now, what is overriding and how is that different from overloading? Overriding is, rather than horizontal, a vertical um, you know, aspect or relationship between functions. So um, functions that are overridden, they have the same name and the same signature, but they are at different levels within the inheritance hierarchy. Uh, hence the, the term vertical, they have a vertical relationship. So let's take a look at that. Um, I have here an abstract data type, an ADT, called entity, okay? And in the, our ADT, our parent object, we have a method called speak. Now I have a dragon, a flying purple people eater, and a human, and a unicorn, okay? And if we take a look at these, in the same way that the parent class, the ADT, the superclass, has a speak method, dragon, which extends entity, also has its own speak method. 
Flying Purple People Eater has its own speak method, Human has its own speak method, and Unicorn has its own speak method. Okay, so um, overriding, they all have the same name, but they're at different levels in the inheritance hierarchy. You know, this speak method is in the superclass, the parent object. This speak method is in a child object, and not the same child object as this object, or this object, or this object. Okay, so they're, it's vertical. If we were to tree this out, remember when we were looking at inheritance hierarchies and I was showing you some inheritance hierarchy charts that I created for games and projects and things? Well, these would be, you know, circles or bubbles underneath the superclass or the parent object, hence the vertical relationship. So back to the main class here, if we were to illustrate this then, you know, basically by overloading speak, if we call these functions here, then we'll be able to see that even though they're at the same level of inheritance, the right function is called based on the kinds of arguments that are passed to it, okay? So that'll illustrate overloading. Now what about overriding? Here's our example of overriding. Well, we're gonna build all the objects in our hierarchy. We're gonna build the superclass object, and even though you wouldn't normally build an ADT, for demonstration purposes, we'll build an ADT, an actual instance of an ADT. And then we'll take all the inherited classes, human, dragon, unicorn, and flying purple people eater. We'll build instances of those. And then once we do that, we're gonna call the speak method on each one. And again, the neat thing about overriding, just like overloading, it sort of simplifies your code. Um, the right method will be called automatically, almost as if, you know, as if by magic, because it works its way through the inheritance hierarchy and says, okay, what kind of object is it? And you know, a dragon object is going to call the dragon's speak method instead of its superclass's parent speak method, and it's not going to be the same as the unicorn speak method or the, the flying purple people eaters speak uh, speak method. Okay, so kind of see how that works or see the structure of overloading versus overriding. So let's run it and see what happens. All right, and if we run the program, here we're overloading, what a lovely day. And then this has been a horrible day, all right? So these are our two overloaded functions here. I'm trying to be as explicit as possible, but again, this one, no arguments, and this one with the argument. So what happened? The first time we called it with no argument, in a horizontal fashion, speaking, what a lovely day, okay? But then the next time we called speak, we passed in a string. So the first speak method was bypassed, and it called the next speak method, which takes, you know, it has a different type of parameter or argument, in this case a string, and it just concatenated it and displayed that, you know, horrible day, which was passed in up here. Okay, now we build all these objects, and now we're going to test instead of overloading, overriding. So let's take a look at that. Alice was an entity, and so she says, I am an entity. Jenny was a human, she says, I'm a human. Uh, Bob was a dragon, so he says, I'm a dragon, okay? Jack was a unicorn, so he says, I'm a unicorn. And Nikki was a flying purple people leader, can't even say it. So she says, I am a flying purple people leader. All right, so just to kind of give you an idea uh, of the difference between overloading and overriding and why they are useful uh, in many programming structures in Java, C++, many object-oriented languages.